Welcome back to GTS Garage guys. Um, this week we're going to predominantly be doing the rear wheel and the aim of this will be to get the rear wheel in place, get the swing arm in place, get the shock absorber in and then work to the front of the bike so we'll be doing the suspension afterwards. The uh, reason I've been doing that is because then basically a guy on the forum Rodea basically owns a very good form for XJ600s and xj 6 it's called XJ Rider, very well, it's worth a, a visit, the amount of information on there is phenomenal. So he's basically come on and said that is a way to get it to a point where it's a rolling project. So at that point the wheels will be on, I can move it in and out and then it's just a case of tarting it up and putting the loom back on. Um, okay, so first of all I think it's worth a summary, because of the way the bearings are, because of the way the bearings are fitted and what's involved in getting the bearings out and in, it's probably worth just a summary just to let you know what's in the kit and how it attaches. So let's crack on. So basically the, set, the, the way it's going to look is the, you have the wheel rim there, you have the cush drive and then you have the sprocket attached to the cush drive. So that is the order it's going. Um, the elements to remember are on this side of the wheel, so away from the sprocket, you have two bearings. Okay, You can't go wrong really on the basis that the recess on this side is bigger than this side. So you have two bearings going, you then have a spacer and then you have one bearing on the other side. So that is basically how this fits. Your cush drive, you have what is called a coupler, which is going to look something similar to that. And then you have a bearing, okay, like that. So basically, uh, or is that the wrong way round? Uh, sorry, that is the wrong way round. Let me just ignore that orange smudge there. The actual bearing is on that side. Okay, so, and it comes in from this. So basically the bearing goes in this side and the coupler you'll, you'll push in from this side here and then the bearing goes on this side there. Okay, so it's very important that you do not forget to put the coupler in, otherwise your bearings will be ruined. Um, so I think there your parts, you have three bearings in for this part, you have a coupler and a bearing in there. What you then have is a seal that goes on the outside, it's a grease seal on the outside, and a grease seal over here. Now that is a very rough drawing, that's basically the components that are going to be involved. All of these components are in a kit. Now I'll put a link in the um, I'll put a link in one of the corners, and I'll also put a link in the description below. So if you were to buy a kit, it would include the uh, one, two, three, four, and it would recall five, and it would look at six. So you'd end up with that. I think it's about twenty nine pounds from WeMoto. Um, if you go to Yamaha, it's bound to be far more expensive, and WeMoto parts are just as good. So that's the summary. Okay guys, um, so that's basically what we're going to be doing, um, and now we're going to look at what we need to do the job, okay? So if you'd like to pan down now. Okay, so basically what you are going to need, you're going to need a grease, you're going to need grease, this is a grease gun for me, but you don't need it in a grease gun. You're going to need some grease to lubricate the rim before you put the, uh, the bearings in. You're going to need a Deblo hammer, you don't use a metal hammer, use uh, the mallet. You're going to need something to drift the bearings out, and you're going to need a pry. Now, a pry bar is used to get the seal out. Do not use a screwdriver to get the seal out. All you'll do is chew up the seal. So, even though getting, you do get new ones anyway, but use a pry bar. You may be able to salvage the other one. I've got some WD-40. Um, I won't be using the meths on this one, but if you wanted to clean the bearings rather than uh, to change them out, because not all bearings need to be clear, uh, not all bearings need to be exchanged. Um, you can just take them out, view them, inspect them, and then put them back in, or repack them with grease and put them back in. If you're going to do that, you need to clean them. You need to clean it with a high flash point liquid, such as alcohol. So I'm using methylated spirits for that. We won't be using that in this task, but I may do. I, I may show you how to do it. The other thing that I'm using is a race driver installation kit. Now, this cost me about 12 quid, and I'm not on it. Uh, to be honest, it's well worth it. For me, it's well worth it. Um, otherwise, you're starting to use the old bearings as templates and to bang things in. This makes it a lot easier. Um, so, 11 quid, I'll put the link again. You don't have to buy it, you can do it the old way. There are many videos out there that show you how to do bearings without putting these in. But to me, the flat surfaces, you know it's true. Um, 
and you can put it actually goes in deep you can actually put it the other way around like this and bang them in further than the rim so to be honest it was well worth the money and you'll need gloves right that's basically the tools that you're going to need oh and you'll also need a uh, two pieces of wood because you're not going to be able to put the um, the wheel when you start banging the bearings you don't want to put that directly on a table okay so let's move across and let's set up this is the uh, the the seal that you're the grease seal that you're going to be removing with the tri bar you can lift this up and there's your cush rubbers there's your coupler and there's the bearing inside um, so the first aspect is to take that one to one side and um, basically if I lift this one up now you can see this is the side with the two bearings in and this is the side with the single bearing in. the two sided bearings are smaller so along with you'll notice in the kit that the um, you've got a very large uh, bearing which is for the cush drive um, you have a medium sized bearing and that's for the right hand side which is attached to the, the rotor and then you've got the cush side which you've got basically you've got two bearings which are a lot smaller so you put the first one in the second one in. getting these out is not that easy using the drift method it has to be said um, the way the way I would recommend getting it is getting a blind bearing puller which is basically a bar that you pull in put inside it then it, you push you uh, basically tighten up a nut and it uh, the jaws on the other end open up so it secures behind the bolt and you end up with a slide hammer action and you can pull them out that is probably the best way to actually get these out once these are out you can then drift the other one you can drift the other bearing out uh, when it comes to the cush drive we shall put that back there sorry when it comes to the cush drive when it comes to the cush drive, you remove the seal and then you can just remove the seal. I would then uh, basically just drift out the coupler from that side and then drift out the bearing from that side. The other thing you must have is a sturdy table, otherwise you'll end up just breaking it. So I'll put that back in and then we will crack on with the drifting. Okay guys, to remove the bearing out of the cush drive, you need to prise, use one of these to prise the grease seal up like so. So you remove the grease seal and you put it to one side. You then flip it over and you need to take the coupling collar out. So with that, because it's there, we're going to just gently tap and drift it away. And it's out. So this is the coupling collar and you can do not lose this, otherwise you'll be in trouble. So what we're going to do is just basically take a drift and we're going to punch it out. Okay, so let's take a look at the wheel. Before we put it back together again, the general setup is the cush drive is going to sit on there. The side that needs the cush drive has space, has a deeper recess, and the reason for that is it takes two bearings. When you take them out, you can't really go wrong to be honest, but just clean it out and that side takes two bearings, this side here takes one bearing. So we're gonna start with one bearing first of all. We're gonna turn it over, you're gonna need two pieces of wood to rest it on, otherwise you're gonna end up in trouble and damaging things. Now what I am going to use is I'm gonna use a, a race bearing set to knock these in. Right? I'm gonna push that one in. Gonna make sure that is straight. And that's turning beautifully. Now in for the second. Put it on. We drive that home. And that's there. Okay guys, the first two bearings are in on the side, on the cush side, cush rubber side. We're now going to install the bearing and the spacer from the other side. So the spacer is the one from the front wire, which comes in there. So this is the spacer that goes in between. Now you need to make sure that you put the spacer in and don't put the bearing in before you put the spacer in, because once this bearing is in, you can't get the spacer That's in. now in place. We now get some grease on our external bearing there. So we'll use our grease gun again. 
that's so just like to pump. not a lot of grease you don't need a lot of grease so don't go mad on it but you can put a little list of grease around the side that will help and you can also put some grease on the inside of that that will also help Okay, so basically I'm moving, I've moved the wheel to the squat box on the basis that the desk is taking a pounder. Okay, that's flat. Now we change part. Okay, so when it comes to the cush drive, we're going to do exactly the same as we've done with all the other bearings. No, maybe a knife would have been much nicer to do. So, so basically these are, um, I think these are all ball wearing, so you're not actually seeing any of them exposed. So the same one, same size, but you don't get to pack any, they're all sealed. So you don't have to worry about that. Okay, so the idea will be to tap these back in. Again, slight bit of grease on your finger. That's enough. Makes all the difference in the world. So what we're going to do now is just to do that. It will help it go in. Doesn't need to be loads. Again, on the outside. Again, doesn't need to be loads. Okay, make sure that they are kind of in straight to begin with before we start bagging. Okay, so that's it. I'll just put that straight down. Good, good. Okay, so you now need to change that because that won't go down through the hole. Nice, it's in home. It's in home. Okay, that does seem, that seems there's no play on the other side, so that's done, that's in, so on the other side now, we put the coupler, and it goes in one side, I have to drive that in. It won't go the other way, it'll only go one way in. So, too big, obviously. But we can get a use that's. We'll probably turn that round. Okay, so. Just in top. Now this is the coupler that I said do not lose last time. We'll just drive that in. The cush drive has now got the bearing in. It's also got the coupler on the back end. So the only thing to do now is this was the old seal, now I want the new seal, is to put the new seal in there. Seal goes in there. There you go. Okay, guys, that's about it. Um, I've got as much as I really want to get done today. Um, actually, I want to go in and get some, get some uh, food. I'm taking the missus to the cinema tonight to watch Bill Bryson's A Walk in the Woods. Should be very good. Um, so. In summary, what I've done is I've taken the cush drive uh, bearing out, I've taken the three bearings out of the wheel, I've checked them for wear tear, which you can hear, and um, so it was definitely the right thing to do to replace. 
um, and I've put, the, I've put the bearings in. Thing to do is there's two bearings on one side, it's fairly obvious because once you get it open, one of the recesses is a lot deeper than the other. So obviously the deeper recess takes two bearings. Um, the aluminium kit, the, sorry, the aluminium race bearing installer kit, I'll put a link to. I found it very useful, even if it was just to give me a straight edge, to be honest, it was quite good. Um, that's all there is to be said for it really, it's up to you if you want to use something like that. But I did and I found them very useful for all of that to be honest. So I'll put a link to that. Um, I've put the push driver, uh, push drive together. The other thing to remember is to make sure you put the spacer between the bearings. Once you've knocked the two bearings in, put the spacer in through the other side and then knock the third bearing in. If you put that third bearing in without putting the spacer, when you go to tight on the, tighten the axle, all you'll do is pull the centre of the bearings together and in the end you'll just break the bearings well before you reach the torque mark, which is something stupid. So you really do need to put that spacer back in. Um, and I think that's about it, guys, for this. So all I'll be doing now is tightening everything out, putting the sprocket cover back on there, and putting the disc brake back on there, and then I shall be taking it to the... Uh, some tyre place up the road and I'll be getting the tyres installed which will be a bit of another, will be another landmark really. So once the tyre is on what am I going to do? Once the tyre is on the wheels coming back on the swing arm is going to be done on Tuesday and I will just build the back end and that will be it really the back end as far as the wheel the swing arm and the um, the monoshock. Once that side's back on then I shall start the front end um, I think that's about it. Not worth going on too much because my plans always change depending on the input that I get. Right guys, that's it. I'm going to go and grab some food, I'm going to go and have a run and then I'm going to go to the pictures. You have a lovely evening and I shall speak to you very soon. Take care, GTS Garage out.